Hello everyone, my name is Pierluigi Gentile. With my talk, I want to highlight their special need of introducing complexity science in higher education for preparing the new generations to be aware and promote a sustainable future. One relevant purpose of science is solving problems and improving the psychophysical well-being of humans. Nowadays, there are almost a billion people on Earth. Of course, each person strives to reach their psychophysical well-being every day. But beyond personal needs, our contemporary world is different because global challenges also need to be faced. The development of transportation means and information and communication technologies has transformed humanity radically. Humans are now more linked to each other than ever before. Humanity as a whole gives rise to a vast and very dynamic network on Earth. Every human belonging to this network needs to face challenges regarding the network as a whole. Such challenges are global for two reasons. First, they might regard almost everyone on Earth. Second, they might be multi-sectorial because they encompass humanity under different points of view, such as health, social, political, cultural, ethical, and economical. Global challenges require global agendas to be faced and won. For instance, in 2015, the United Nations have compiled a comprehensive and far-reaching plan, the 2030 Agenda that included 17 goals assuring a general sustainable development if pursued worldwide. At the heart of the 17 goals, there are human beings, their societies, and the world economy, the urban areas, the natural ecosystems, and all the living beings they embed, and the climate. They are complex systems. Seemingly, they are diverse and traditionally investigated by well distinct disciplines, such as medicine, biology, psychology, social sciences, economy, ecology, engineering, physics, chemistry, etc. Such subjects are often maintained well distinct and taught separately at the universities, apart from a few exceptions. The consequence of monodisciplinary teaching is that we prepare specialists who are not endowed with the required knowledge and skills to face the global challenges of this century. We need to form specialists and other professional figures who know the concepts and methodologies to propose solutions to global challenges. Such new professional figures called polymath or generalist or hybrid should be formed by teaching them complexity science. Complexity science is an interdisciplinary domain of research, outlining the phenomenologies and laws of complex systems and giving the thinking skills to tackle global challenges. The complex systems mentioned above that, it, that are human beings, human societies, world economy, urban areas, natural ecosystems, and the climate are pretty diverse. However, they share three relevant features. First, all complex systems can be described as networks whose constitutive elements are nodes and links. The nodes represent the network elements, whereas the links are the connections between them. For instance, in a cell, the nodes are the chemical compounds and the links are the chemical reactions. In our brain, the nodes are the neurons and the links are the connections among synapses and dendrites belonging to different neurons. Alternatively, in ecosystem, the nodes are the biological species, whereas the links are the symbiotic and trophic relationships among them. Different complex systems have distinct networks architectures. For most complex systems, nodes and links are diverse and their behavior might be variable. Moreover, relationships are mutual. There are numerous feedback actions. 
And networks are characterized by high degrees of nonlinearity. Network science is one of the fundamental theories to describe complex systems. Secondly, complex systems are out of equilibrium in the thermodynamic sense. They are dissipative structures because they maintain order within them by discharging entropy in the surrounding environment. If the complex systems involves only inanimate matter, its behavior is driven by force fields. If the complex system involves living beings, its behavior also depends on the information that the living beings collect, store, process, and send to pursue their goals. Out of equilibrium thermodynamics is another relevant theory to be taught. Thirdly, complex systems exhibit emergent properties. The property is emergent when it belongs to the network as a whole. It cannot be attributed to a few nodes and links, but to the entire network, to the entire collection of nodes and relationships. Examples are the phenomena of temporal and spatial self-organizations and deterministic chaos. Some of the emergent properties can be interpreted by recurring to nonlinear dynamics. There are emergent properties that are not fully understood and cannot be predicted yet. The phenomenon of life is an example. Life has many peculiar attributes. However, we don't know its origin. We are not able to obtain life from scratch from its molecular constituents, and we cannot predict the evolution of its forms. So the question is, why are there emergent properties that are not understood and cannot be predicted? Well, there are at least three primary reasons which outline an epistemological complexity. The first reason is related to descriptive complexity, which represents the difficulties we encounter in describing any complex systems by using a reductionist approach. Since any complex systems is representable as a network, its description is challenging due to the number of nodes, their diversity and variability of behavior, the number of links, their diversity and variability, and the sensitivity, sensitivity of all these features to the context. The emergent properties that are not understood yet have the features of variable patterns. Variable patterns are entities or events whose recognition is made difficult by their multiple features, variability, and extreme sensitivity to the context. Examples of variable patterns are the biological species, symptoms and patterns in medical diagnosis, social, political, and economical events, and deterministic chaos. There are no universally valid and effective algorithms for recognizing variable patterns. The second reason we find difficulties in rationalizing specific emergent properties is bound to computational complexity. Most of the computational problems regarding complex systems are solvable but intractable. Examples include scheduling, the traveling salesman problem, the Schrodinger equation, machine learning, financial forecasting, and so on and so forth. According to computational complexity theory, all the solvable problems can be either polynomial, when the number of computational steps is a polynomial function of the dimensions of the problem, or exponential, when the number of computational steps is an exponential function of the dimensions of the problem. All the polynomial problems are tractable because it's possible to determine the exact solutions in a reasonable time interval, whatever the problem's dimensions. On the other hand, the exponential problems having large dimensions are intractable because it's impossible to determine the exact solutions in a reasonable time interval, even if the fastest supercomputer in the world is employed. Such exponential problems are transformed in non-deterministic polynomial problems. After fixing an arbitrary criterion of acceptability for a solution, 
specific heuristic algorithms, generic solutions that are tested if acceptable in polynomial time. Meanwhile, many scientists also drawn by $1 million offered by the Clay Mathematics Institute in Cambridge that has declared P versus NP as one of its millennium problems are trying to verify if algorithms can transform NP problems into polynomial problems or if such transformation is impossible. If anyone rigorously demonstrated that the NP problems are reducible to P problems, computational complexity would melt like snow under the sun. However, we must be aware that this improbable discovery will not render any emergent property of complex systems predictable. The predictive power of science has intrinsic limitation. A limitation regards the microscopic world and is expressed through the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. According to this principle, it's impossible to accurately and simultaneously determine two relevant features as position and momentum of any particle. Therefore, it's impossible to make trustable predictions of the microscopic particle's dynamics. Cognizant of this limitation, we might think of limiting our description of complex systems to the macroscopic scale. However, complex systems might exhibit chaotic dynamics. And any deterministic chaotic dynamic is aperiodic and extremely sensitive to the initial conditions. Since unavoidable uncertainties always taint any determination of the initial conditions, it derives that any chaotic dynamic is unpredictable in the long term by definition. In summary, we know natural complexity from an ontological point of view because we know the features shared by complex systems, which can be described as networks, working in out of equilibrium conditions in the thermodynamic sense, and they show emergent properties. Some of the emergent properties are understood, some others no. Why? Because of descriptive complexity, computational complexity, and the intrinsic limitation in the predictive power of science. Altogether, constitute what is known as the epistemology of complexity. Being aware of these limitations that define an epistemological complexity, how can we prepare the next generations to be aware and promote a sustainable future? How can we reach the goals of the 2030 agenda and win any global challenge of this century? Well, first of all, we need an interdisciplinary approach in both research and teaching. It's urgent to propose interdisciplinary courses on complex systems. Teach the theories that have some transdisciplinary features, breaking down the traditional disciplinary boundaries. And it's important to present the properties of complex systems. This is what I propose at my university. I have written a book titled Untangling Complex Systems, a grand challenge for science for my courses. I'm also participating in a European project of strategic partnership Erasmus Plus, whose aim is to enhance higher education on complex systems for promoting sustainable development. Secondly, we, when we investigate complex systems, we cannot trust just in the reductionist approach. We also need a systemic approach to deal with emergent phenomena. Cognitive maps, system thinking, concept map extension, and geographical information systems aid in exploring, understanding, and depicting both within system and cross systems interactions, and in managing complex scenarios. Another, another valuable way for implementing system thinking is through service learning. Service learning is a teaching strategy that intentionally engages students into communities through service activities. A new linear mindset should be forged through computer simulations and agent-based modeling, in addition to a centralized and clockwork mindset. 
clockwork mindsets favor reductive understanding, centralized control, and linear cause and effect relationships. On the other hand, no linear mindset based on positive and negative feedback actions understand emergent phenomena and decentralized control. And algorithmic thinking should also be trained through natural computing, whose rational is that any distinguishable state of either matter or energy can be used to encode information. And any of these, its transformations can be conceived as computation. Based on this idea, any complex systems can be analyzed through a three-step procedure. The first step is the computational level analysis, which determines the inputs, outputs, and the computation the system performs. The second step is the algorithmic analysis, which consists of formulating an algorithm that can perform the previous computations. And the final step is the implementation level analysis that searches for mechanisms that implement the formulated algorithms. If the three step analysis are carried out appropriately, the final mechanisms will be plausible replications of the complex system's behaviors. Such replicas will be reasonable models for interpreting complex systems. It's usually stated that sustainable development has three dimensions, economic, societal, and environmental. And ethical extra dimensions must be added. Polymath figures must be formed technically and ethically to build an equitable future. The awareness of the limitations humanity encounters in describing and predicting the behavior of complex systems makes all those technologies that perturb and modify the spontaneous evolution of complex systems highly disputable. Any polymath should always be prompt to raise a fundamental question. Is always fair and safe to do what technologies make doable? Well, the answer should be found by interrogating science and other forms of knowledge. So in conclusion, it's urgent to form polymaths that who can face global challenges. Their education should hinge on complexity science. And the famous German mathematician David Hilbert was used to saying, as long as a branch of science tries to face an abundance of problems, so long it's alive. A lack of problems foreshadows extinction or the cessation of independent development. Well, complexity science is particularly alive because it's necessary to tackle the global challenges of this center. More information can be found in my book and in a recent paper I have published in Rindiconti de Thanks for your attention.